1,400 pound, 1,400 pound to service a four cylinder turbocharged two and a half litre engine. Hello and welcome back to Life in Motion and welcome to my Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. Now I've just gone over 10,000 miles in this car so I thought it was a perfect time to update you on what it's like to live with. Now I use this car every day so I want to explain to you some of the good bits, some of the bad bits, how I'm feeling over the last kind of 10,000 miles I've been driving it. If you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe to see plenty of future videos like this one to come but for now you know what? Let's jump in. So that us stands this side away. So what is this car? Well, it's a 718 Cayman and it's a GTS. So a GTS is the top spec car that you can get on a 718 Cayman before you go to a GT4. So a GTS is basically a sporty version. It's got kind of everything that you'd want in the car as an option, but as standard. And then there's a couple of things you can add, but pretty much it's got everything you want. For example, at the front, we've got a design splitter. So you've got this splitter here, which is not normal, and you can see the, uh, the air intakes in there and the radiators. Other than that, you've also got PDLS Plus or Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. On the lights, again, just an option that I really liked. I had a previous car, had it, and I really wanted it. Moving to the side, you've got 20 inch Carrera S alloys at the front and the back and red brake calipers. Red brake calipers denote a Cayman S upwards, so obviously they come standard on the GTS. You've also got the GTS logo on the door and you've got the black air intake. So when you get to the back, you have a redesigned rear splitter. You have these central exhaust tips, which actually have a sports exhaust. So there's a little valve in the exhaust that opens and closes. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same as, as the standard car. We have, I think, got clear lenses as well and you've got the GTS badge denoting it. But apart from that, yeah, this is basically the outside of the car. Some other things to note, this is Miami Blue. It's one of my favourite colours. I just, I fell in love with it a couple of years ago and yeah, I've just been besotted by it since. My previous car was an A8 grey, not a 718, a base car. So when I was going to change up and like upgrade to this, yeah, it kind of had to be Miami Blue. And I think it looks fantastic, especially with the black wheels, especially with the red calipers. Other things, this is a 2018 car. So it has a 2.5 litre four cylinder turbocharged engine. Unlike the new GTS, which is a four litre, that I think the same engine you get out of a GT3, a 911 GT3, the new one, this has not got that four litre, it's got two and a half. And now one of the reasons why I wanted to do a living with video is because I used to drive a mini John Cooper Works, then I bought a base 718 Cayman, and now I've got this car. So I kind of had a, probably a natural progression for like a younger person who's interested in cars, having a hot hatch and then going something kind of sporty. So I'm hoping my insight that I can give to you is gonna help you guys. So with that, if you want to comment anything or just drop me a note, just make sure you just drop me a note on Instagram or just comment below and ask me any questions. I'm happy to help. But also, if you are driving a John Cooper Works or an M2 or an A35 or something like that, and you're thinking, I want a new car, but I want something just different, just a little bit out of the ordinary, Porsche could be your answer. Have a look on Auto Trader. have a look on the Porsche website, I bought all of my cars so far from Porsche in Swindon from a guy called Jordan. So make sure if you are looking to buy one, drop Jordan a note. But yeah, I would just say one thing. If you're looking to buy a Porsche, make sure you just, just look at building a relationship with dealers. Because if you like me and you want a 911 next or something like that, then having a relationship with a dealer is a really good idea. But anyway, nothing outside. Let's have a look inside. <laughs> So, on the inside, well, fortunately, the 718 Cayman is a beautiful place to sit. Being the GTS, this actually has a GTS interior pack. I think it was an option, and what it gives you is these GTS seats with the Alcantara in the middle. In front of you, you've got an Alcantara steering wheel, which I'll touch on in a minute. You've got a Alcantara gator for your gear stick and also you've got Alcatara on the sides. You've also got this extended leather on the dashboard and you've got carbon inlays pretty much everywhere you'd look. But yeah, in front of me, I've got traditional 718 dials. So I've got 
my rev counter in the middle, speed on the left, and on the right, I've got a digital display that goes through different modes, like how the car's performing, my MPGs, that sort of thing, but also then maps and media and other things. Below that, I've got the multifunction steering wheel. Again, I think it was an option on this car. Gives me things like radio control buttons and also answering in the calls and scroll through my different menus on my dashboard. I've also got this little button down here. Now this car's got something called Sports Chrono. What that gives you is this little button down here with a PDK, also has this little button in the middle called Sport Response. But this dial around the side goes to different modes like your normal mode, your Sport mode, Sport Plus and Individual. And in the middle, you've got that Sport Response. That gives you a immediate 20 seconds of response, basically blips the throttle, changes gear. So if you're overtaking, for example, you can press that button and it, it sets up the car so you can get out nice and quickly and fly past. You've got things like automatic lights, uh, cruise control, those sort of things, basic stuff that you kind of want to have in a car. Although just to know, not standard on pretty much any car. So if you're looking at a Cay Cayman, just make sure you're looking at options list because those kind of things you might get on like a Mini or whatever it might be, aren't standard. In the middle, you've got this touchscreen. I mean, it's pretty basic. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty responsive. There's things like Porsche apps, which I never use, but things like Tuner and you can Bluetooth your phone and there's a navigation in there. But fortunately, in the center here, I use USB stick and I just pop in my phone so that I can just basically have CarPlay. It has CarPlay, it has Android Auto. Pop your phone and then you can just use those apps in the middle. Further down, you've got automatic climate control, heated seats. All the way down, you've got something uh you got um pasm porsche active suspension management basically the shock absorbers just i think just basically solidify or they then relax so it basically gives you a different kind of ride depending on what you want to do um you can turn your traction control off if you'd like um put your spoiler up and down as well or i always press this button but it's got a sport exhaust button so it just makes it a little bit louder for the passenger comfort, you've got things like cup holders, you've got another USB socket in there, and also you've got a glove box, you can put your bits and bobs. And then other than that, if you're on a big road trip, you've got Bose surround sound, so a little, slightly better quality um, of speaker system. But yeah, otherwise, it's pretty minimalist in here, it's pretty simple. The Cayman's been out since 2016, so probably is due an update at some point soon, but for me, it works really well. App, um, the CarPlay works just absolutely fine for me. So actually, yeah, spot on inside. So now I think it's probably time to get out on the road and I'm gonna start talking through kind of what it's like to drive and we're gonna really talk about what it's like to live with. I wanna show you around the car, what it's like, what I'm getting, but now, yeah, now it's time to have a chat. So you know what? Let's start up and let's crack on. So welcome on board the GTS and let's start with the question, what's it like to live with this car over 10,000 miles? Well overall, really, really good. Now 10,000 miles is not a short distance, it's quite a long time, it's really about 8 or 9 months. I had this car back in January so it's been roughly 10 months for me since I've had this car. So I've done actually probably quite a few more miles than I thought I would have done. And what's it been like? What's it been like to use, to use every day? Well, I'm gonna go into quite a few of things, but overall, it's been really, really good. Now let's get into a little bit more detail. Well, first of all, usability is a big thing for me. It's probably the number one thing. This is my everyday car. I do about 12,000 miles a year in my car. So for me, it needed to be absolutely, but well, usable. It needs to be something I can use every day without a sweat, and it absolutely is that. It's, it's perfect, it's brilliant. Now it does great miles per gallon, 28.2 is my average miles per gallon over 10,000 miles. Now my average miles per hour has been 35 miles per hour. <sighs> oh, it's so good. So good. On the motorway run, I'll get more, I'll probably get 34, 35 miles per gallon. If I'm driving a little bit more exuberantly, I will get less than 20 miles per hour if I want to. So really, a really usable car. Beneath that, actually practically wise, 
there's always been plenty of space for me. Now it's pretty much me and then maybe my other half will join me uh, on a little trip, but actually most of the time it's me. And I've got a boot at the front, a boot at the back. As long as you're not expecting to put big suitcases in the car, then actually it's perfect. It's, it's probably more than perfect, it's brilliant actually. You can get big duffel bag kind of things in the front, I can get kind of a suit laying on the back there and then the boot I can put some other bits as well so for a weekend away or whatever it might be really really good other good things about this car these sport seats have been very very comfortable they're only the two-way electric so there's various different options you can get with seats with Porsche but it's been really comfortable um, air conditioning heated steering wheel heated seats um, cup holders wise I've got cup holders mm, they're not that deep they're quite shallow so if you get a big cup they can kind of move around quite a lot basically top tip if you're having a medium drink buy a large cup small drink buy a medium cup just gives you an extra bit doesn't mean you slosh around a bit the other nice part is that it's still a very very capable outstanding sports car now this is the two and a half litre four cylinder turbocharged engine it's 360 plus horsepower through 367 horsepower and it's mated to a seven speed dual clutch pdk gearbox which is porsche's automatic automatic gearbox and it's outstanding it's very difficult to see or find one that's better i've got a sort of sports response button and also my sport mode there's a bike here that i'm going to overtake in a minute and the pickup on this car is just amazing it's just to do that Actually, with that sports exhaust, just sounds so good. It does move around quite a lot, and you can obviously put the oh god, poppers and cracks, and oh god, it sounds good. But yeah, I mean, it just it's so good. And what it's nice is that you can use this every day, and then when you want to oh, want to go out for a drive on a Sunday, you can do that. Oh, oh. So, kicking off the not so great bits, probably the first one, this seat belt, this flimming passenger seat belt, all it does is just tap against the side of the door or the, the seat, whatever it is, it's just basically the metal bit on plastic and it just taps all the time. Now, often it's when I'm on a bit of a bumpier road or I'm going around corners, but that's pretty quite annoying. I often have the seat belt like on this bolster, it just kind of keeps it just out of the way, but yeah, that can be really annoying. Cup holders I mentioned, they don't really, they're, they're, very, they're very shallow, so if you put a, a big cup in there, it can move about and it can spill and that, that's just quite annoying. Other things, some, now I had this on a pre, my previous car and now this car, some of the plastic in here does like to rattle. It's often behind me, it's never normally in the cabin, it's often this little plastic bit behind me and it just has little rattles. Now at the moment, it's not really rattling that badly. But yeah, it has rattled every so often, and that's just getting me a... I don't, I don't really expect that of Porsche, but you know, I know cars have rattles and blah blah blah, but yeah, that's sometimes quite annoying. Another thing, which is, mm, it's not bad, but it's, and it's obviously what you should expect if you're buying a car like a Porsche, servicing costs. Now if you buy the car at the right time, you probably spend over a couple of years four five six hundred pound at most on servicing right over two two ish years if you buy the wrong time perhaps i bought it at the wrong time and you're due a major service like this car was in july so i was about five six months into ownership i had to get a service it was a major service so it replaced um filters uh not spark maybe spark plugs air filters bits of bobs like that and it was around 1400 pound 1400 pound to service a four cylinder turbocharged two and a half litre engine does that not it just seems bonkers to think that when I was at Audi and an RS3 would have been half that for a major service, if probably less than that, it's just a little bit hard to swallow. Again, it's Porsche, it's very high quality, it's a fantastic sports car, and you've got to keep it serviced and regularly maintained. And I'm happy to pay for that, you know, blah, blah, you, you know, you've got to pay for servicing, but just seems a little bit steep, you know. You know what, I think I'm going to end it there. This has been a video around how I felt and how this car has been to live with over 10,000 miles. Overall, it has been brilliant. There are some certain things that we're not sure about. A, not to forget this is an amazing, amazing sports car. 
every day, sometimes that amazingness can rub off and the kind of novelty of it just kind of wear away. And it means you're ending up driving maybe a slightly more impractical car than, you know, a hatchback is. However, what you are getting is an amazing, amazing sports car that you can use every day and it's so usable, especially compared to the previous 981 Cayman, which wasn't a turbocharged car. I hope you've all enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a like and a comment below. What do you think of the car? Have you, if you have one, make sure to comment what you found about it. If you want to ask me any questions, jump on my Instagram, comment below, answer me questions. I'd love to answer and help you in your quest to find a new car. But yes, I'm going to leave it there. Make sure to subscribe, see plenty of future videos to come. But for now, I'll see you soon.